Okay, um, welcome back. This is session seven, directed graphical models. And we're going to try to uh, put down a little bit more, a more concrete example of how to do learning. And in this case, we want to do learning from complete data. In the case uh, of missing data, we cannot use um, this method because um, there is no way of, of, of solving the, the, the missing values using this particular way of doing it. So we need to go and do um, either variational inference or sampling to solve that particular problem. So we will talk about that later on. But we will talk about the simple case today. So um, in the learning case, what we are uh, interested in is to, uh, given the likelihood, as always, right? We have a general model over here in which we have n different samples and our likelihood of the data given the parameters is nothing else but uh, the multiplication of every, every, every different sample. And I will traverse the graph and multiply all the, the probabilities of every node given uh, its parents. Okay, times the probability, uh, also a uh, uh, condition on the parameters, right? So basically this is just the, um, the factorization of node-wise elements, right? So is from the data, which nodes of the data corresponds to, to, every, uh, to every node and then use those parameters. And if we assume that the prior also factorizes um, in such a way that the, the parameters that correspond to each node um, lie together into some representation, then we can easily compute the posterior. And the posterior is just the multiplication of these two things over here. So my, my posterior is nothing else than the multiplication of the likelihood node-wise time the factors node-wise. So this is really useful because now I can parallelize every computation through the nodes because they don't depend on anything else, right? I'm just um, working on my on my neighborhood. And if I can just do that really easily and, and, and I don't need to traverse the whole graph to, to infer information about myself. Um, if we try to put this into a, more, an, into a more concrete example, let's assume the following. So. Consider this graph, right? Let's say like we have five different variables and these variables are um, in this dependent, uh, de dependency, right? So let's say x1 is the parent and x2 and x3 depend on x1, x4 depends on two and three, and five only depends on x3, okay? And we collected some data from these variables. So we have these uh, five rows of, of data and we observe if the variable was on or off in each particular uh, case, okay? And we can further model the information of this process. So we know, for instance, that the information of a node given the parents, it, it uh, behaves as a categorical distribution with parameters uh, uh, TC. That means like for each particular node, I have the probability of that particular class. And this TC, I can have the, the probability or like the, the, um, the parameter that represents the probability of one node being in state K, given that the parent is in state C. So I can model that, that particular distribution. And since this is also a categorical, right? I can just um, make sure that every different state of the node should sum up to one, right? So I need to put that constraint over here. So at the end, I have uh, K different um, categories per class, and I'm going to have the multiplication of uh, KS uh, classes according to the parents, okay? And I'm going to have T, T different nodes in this in these model. So for a prior, since we have categorical distribution over here, let's assume some Dirichlet distribution for the theta TCs. And the posterior then is also a Dirichlet, right? So my, my Dirichlet is going to be 
uh, these um, uh, count of the TCs plus the alpha TC, right? So this is going to be my count of the of the pseudo counts in the prior plus the actual counts for that particular class. So this is a TC. I'm not sure. Like this, it's really ugly. Sorry. Uh, so <laughs> this is a TC here, and as you okay, and my my NTCK is nothing else but the counts. Okay, so. I'm counting the number of times and the node T is uh, actually in class K and the parent is in class C. So I'm just I'm, I'm just counting from my data how many how many uh, times the node is in each particular class given the parent, okay? And we can further assume the a prior in, uh, on the on this Dishle as one. So we, we can do uh, add one smoothing, okay? If you remember, this is a, a really handy way of, of counting because we will avoid the zero count problem that we discussed when we were working with the multinomials and the Dirichlet. So basically, if, have, if, if I have no, no uh, um, kind of uh, uh, persons or, 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 or show ups of that particular variable, I will have a problem, right? Because my my distribution uh, won't, won't see any, any example, so I may assume that they don't have any probability when in fact they do, right? So the whole idea of this is add one to avoid that, that particular problem. And if you remember from this, since everything is a Dirichlet, uh, my maximum posteriori is just uh, the addition of these, uh, of these counts. That the counts from my data plus the counts from my priors, and then I just add everything together to compute the ratios. Okay, so now I may ask, for instance, what are the parameters for a given node? So I'm interested in all the nodes, but since that is kind of tiresome, I will just do a couple of them right now. So let's just, let's just start with, the, for instance, with t equal four. So I may ask, what are the parameters for this node? Right, I'm interested in this one right now. So what do I need to do? Since our counts are focalized, I just need to, to check the node, the counts of four, given the values of the parents, right? So an easy way to solve this is just to enumerate everything, since we have all the, all the information here, and just count by hand, because we don't have any other option right now. So I'm just going to make a really quick table over here. So I want to have my, my parents node, just to see and enumerate the, the possibilities here. So the possibilities that may happen is are this one, right? These four possibilities. So this is my enumeration of, of the of the C classes over here. And now what I want to do is come here and compute my my counts in TCK for k equals zero and k equal one. So basically I just want to come here and check when x is zero and how many times I see this particular parison. So for instance, when four is zero are these and these rows. And now I want to see if I have shows up of zero, zero. So zero, zero appears zero times. And for, um, for zero, one, I have one. For one, zero, I have zero. Oh, sorry, this is a one, one, okay. And for one, one, I have uh, one, right? Now I do the same for one, so I have these three rows over here and all of them are one, one, so this is zero, 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 uh, one. Oh, sorry, uh, this is one, this is two, and I have a one, zero here, so this should be one, no zero, okay? Basically, I'm just counting, right? And now uh, I can do my inference. So my inference is just this maximum posteriori, right? So my, my infer uh, theta for each particular k, k0 and k1. And this is my tck, right? Theta, tck. Now, um, what, I'm, what I'm gonna do is to do my, um, my zero counting. Did I count correctly here? One, two, three, four, five, right? Yeah, so for zero, I have zero, one. Yeah, I have one. 
one 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 okay and two okay one okay and I have one zero one one zero one yeah okay I think I think we got it now since I have my alpha one what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do a plus one on all of my my rows so I will avoid doing that particular computation over here right so I will avoid my zero count now what I need to do is just do the summation of all of them and then normalize right so I have two over here so this is one half each yeah so this is one half and one half now in here I have one two three uh, so I have one third two thirds and one third okay so I have three here again and this will be one third and two thirds and here I have uh, two plus three that's five so I have two fifths and three fifths okay so just double check if I just counted wrong but the, the whole idea is, is the same right you just go count each of these values and then use them again here and we can do one more for, if you want so we can compute for instance what will happen for t5 and t5 is easier because it just depends on 3 right so for the count of 3, 3 just has 0 and 1 as the possible values so now I can do my tck, my ntck and just count for k equals 0 and for k equal 1 right so I want to see when 5 is 0 how many uh, combinations do I have so for 5 0 uh, I have just 1 and for 5 0 and 1 I have 1 2 1 2 3 right so I have 3 over here for 5 1 I just have 1 and it is this 1 and this should be 0 okay so I, again I have my 5 counts over here I do my alpha plus 1 in all of these so it is easier to to map it and now I can count my my parameter right my tck over here and I will do it for k equals 0 and k equals 1 so you end up with a vector right or the matrix in this case so now again 1 2 3 so I have 2 thirds and 1 third uh, 3 4 5 6 so I have 4 6 that is 2 thirds and I have 2 6 that is 1 third okay so these are my parameters and you can continue and you can do the same thing for all the for all the values in the in the graph and these will be your parameters and these uh, are the values that you will use to characterize and do inference or in the in the data or predict information from the data using this model okay so we will come back with some conditional independence um, and some Markovian properties okay